All right, we're following up after that trailer reaction we just had for the beginning after the end. And a lot of people are very dooming about this, right? A lot of doomers think it's over. It's already over before it even happened. The worst news we could get has happened today from Chibi. What a clickable title. Chibi, explain to me exactly what's going on. The beginning after the end gets an official anime announcement. And when I finished this trailer, I was like... This is some good news. Okay. And then I scrolled down, and yeah. then I saw the studio attachment. I was like, ooh. A-cat. That's not too good. And then I looked at the director, director. and I was like, what's he responsible for? And uh, upon what do you uh, looking at the director. Stay alive! Stay <laughs> alive, baby! <laughs> Which season of Data Live, though? Data Live 2? Yo, Katana Gatari, yo, aren't these some huge names? We love Data Live here. Listen, even if you think that Data Live is trash, and I had a lot of fun watching it, and it's not like they're terrible animes. Like, what's going on? Director. Also, School Days. School Days, isn't that really, like, really, like, viral? Like, some, doesn't some dumbass shit happen near the end? Katana Gatari? That's not the Monogatari series that people usually know through, like, uh, Bake, right? Or Kizu. But a separate type of Gatari show regarding some sort of, like, swordsman, right? And Higurashi, when they cry, like, aren't these pretty pretty good names? What's going on, Chibi? He's worked on Data Live as a director and School Leave Data Live alone! Days as a director. And to be fair, these are old, yeah. old series years ago at this point. So let's look at, like, his newest okay, stuff. Okay, okay. But you could take it. Oh, no! Kingdom of Ruins were cooked! We're cooked! We saw Kingdom of Ruins. I finished that shit, bro. Oh no! Oh no! What is this? Saikyo no Osama? I, I don't know what that is. High Speed Etoile? I, I don't know. I don't know any of these other, but I do know Kingdom of Ruins and the overall direction of that show. Dude, that is. It, first episode was like, oh shit. Peak revenge? Oh my god. The best revenge story? No. Baited. Baited. Mid. A look at some of his newer stuff and the only noteworthy thing that really does like stand out to me personally is like the digimon adventures and that's honestly the katana gatari probably is the best that he did he even did like data live myri judgment damn this guy this guy must fucking love data live about it and i'm just like okay so we have one of the most popular mm. webtoon series getting Here's what I think is happening, and I don't know what Chibi's gonna say, right? It doesn't feel like it's getting the, uh, the respect it deserves. Have you noticed the pattern of behavior where Korean webtoon content does not get the adaptation it deserves? Now, solo leveling, A1 Pictures, pretty fucking good. High School of God, what happened to that shit? Power of God right now, what's happening to that shit? Do you think that there is like a language barrier, culture barrier, some sort of communication barrier? I'm not gonna say racism. No, no. That's way too jumping to conclusions. But you know how ReZero, the author Nagatsuki Tape, and Studio White Fox has a close connection. They work side by side. Whenever One Piece is happening with the movies, like Film Red, didn't Oda literally have hands-on involvement with the studio? When that happens, because they're Japanese, it's easier to get along and kind of communicate that shit. I wonder if the Korean culture language barrier or something about that, maybe it's just like less prioritized. We're just treated as second citizen, you know, projects. But the titles, it gets so much attention. Like, they even let in, with the trailer let in saying 150 million readers worldwide or something, right? So like, why aren't they giving it such priority studios and, you know, directors and everything like that? An anime adaptation, and it's getting adapted by probably one of the worst studios. Well, it's not Engi. One of the worst studios. No, no, no. A Studio 8-bit. What else is a really shitty studio reason that we're really mad at? The Answer Studio, which is behind Season 2, Tower of God. But it's getting adapted by, like, one of the worst potential studios it could get. Is it really the worst? Like, like, okay. I know. Listen, listen. We watch Kingdom of Ruin. That shit dookie. But... I'm not coping. I genuinely believe Data Live seasons one, two, three. Fantastic. Mm hmm. Call me crazy. Call me glaze. I'm glazing. I remember what I saw. I don't like what Geek, you know, Studio Geek Toys did afterwards. And it's got a director, which no, no hate to the director. You know, he has his own talent and skill as well. 
definitely a professional, and I know that he can cook if he wants to cook, 100%. If he wants. But when you have, like, a team and a staff that's basically this mishmash of someone that's worked on, like, Data Live and School Days, and then a studio that obviously... <laughs> no, leave Data Live alone! Why can't you say Kingdom of Ruins and School Days? He has not had, like, any home run... This one, right? This literally aired last season. This is about a guy that, like, is part of the Demon Lord's army, but he's a human. He's trying to be good. It was pretty... Eh. It was just mid. It's not bad. It's not amazing. It's just mid. And do you want mid to be behind the beginning after the end? Like, it can't be, right? Why are they not putting emphasis on priority and talent, right? For a show as... That could be as big as the beginning after the end. Bangers, so to speak, since its existence. Like, I mean, once again, this is my anime list, and obviously we can't take my anime list completely seriously. But when you take a hard look at just the ratings, the fact that they're all four, five, and sixes, it shows that all these series are... It's pretty bad. They were never bangers. They never really got any form of momentum, recognition, yeah. and basically the only thing that really stands out in terms of the cast... Katana Gatari, that's it. That's working on the upcoming anime at the beginning after the end is the director that is well known for some of the things he's directed. So the fact is, it's um, it's not looking good. And like, We're cooked. The beginning after the end fans, it is, it's not looking good with this trailer announcement earlier today. Now, to be fair, this is very early on, and from yeah. what information we got today, you know, the beginning after the end is not set to air until next year, 2025, okay? It, it's a long time, it's, well, it's not really long. You know what else had a long time to prepare? Blue Lock Season 2. Time, I mean, to be fair, we're like three months away from 2025, but like... We know that it's potentially nine, eight months out from now, so there is some time there for them to cook or whatever. This is a very you know what else had a lot of time to cook? Tower of God season two. Very early presentation of the show, but looking at the staff, looking at the studio, it's very clear that um, I think it's Tapas. The title of this video really should be. The beginning after the end is actually the end before the beginning. True. The tapas, you know, the, the people that own the beginning after the end, like the platform it's like published on. I'm willing to bet you when they were probably licensing out the beginning after the end to get like an anime adaptation, they probably took the cheapest route. And mm. that's why that's what blows my mind. Why aren't these potentially insane source materials not getting the treatment it deserves don't you want to make more money don't you want to give us such a good product that like people will talk about this shit like mushoku tensei like re-zero why are they not putting priority talent onto it and the only thing that i can observe as a consumer of anime is korean webtoons they're just not well respected received by the japanese industry what's up with this shit other than solo leveling has there been any other amazing just like adaptations? Like look what's happening to Tower of God right now. Even season one was kind of shaky. Season two is just, it's just a fucking abomination. God of High School, I never got to watch it. A lot of people complain how terrible it was too. There is something going on. And the only pattern that I see is webtoons. Just Japanese and just don't, don't like it. That's probably what happened here. They wanted to do the most cost effective cheapest route to be able to get the beginning after the end animated and um it definitely fingers crossed for omniscient omniscient uh, readers viewpoint do we have a studio for that actually we've only had trailers and just marketing through that right there, there wasn't anything actually uh defined for orv right because that's going to be another huge korean uh content that's going to come to the uh, anime world but uh hopefully things go well there definitely shows now once again there's no in like confirmation to back this up but definitely when it comes to stuff getting like anime adaptation you usually have a bunch of studios come in the production committee and stuff and you know usually there's a process to where what studio do you want and usually the early ones you get might be the uh the cheapest ones and in this case that's basically what probably happened here but even disregarding this there is something i do want to talk about in the um the comment section of this anime announcement on my anime list, someone brought up something that is pretty interesting. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but apparently the publisher of, like, the series, like, changed the illustrator because they wanted to reduce the salary, <laughs> but he did not accept. Change the illustrator to reduce the salary. Corporate greed always getting in the way of art. 
And name a better fucking duo. So basically, there was already ongoing stuff for a while now within the work of the beginning after the end that the illustrator actually got changed out Damn. because they wanted to cut costs. Imagine being that person that is the replacement. Not the guy getting replaced, but think of the replacement guy. Imagine the job interview. Imagine how he feels. Because like he knows what's going on too. And the student bank is like, hey, listen, you're pretty mid. But like the guy we're paying right now, we, we can't pay him that much. So I need you to go in and we're going to cut your budget. You're going to be paid less to put out mid. Are you fine with this? Like, how does that illustrator feel about this? If that's indeed the case, we can already see the, um, how management is handling the beginning after the end. So it's pretty sad to see if this is indeed true or not. But getting back into the main topic, the point is, is that beginning after the end is a very beloved series. It's, it's, it's really loved. Like it's. I had no idea until I made that video about that summary of beginning after the end video. We what we reacted to that and man, oh man, like I had no clue how big of a show this potentially could be. Like it's not a show yet, right? It's just like a webtoon, but it is so, so popular. I had no clue. Genuinely just living under a rock. It's not a, um, a low name, low tier series by any means. And the presentation of this trailer alone, I think is already giving it a very bad look. And hear me out on that. The trailer animation was pretty mid. There was a sword fight scene, which was slightly better in Tower of God Season 2, but is that a good benchmark? The planes dropping the bombs just looked like CGI mismap. I, I don't know, it, it just, it was like, eh. It looked cool, but it was nothing like, wow. Okay. Everybody knows at this point in time, if you watch my content, I, I'm a fan of Isekai slop. I, I, I do. I, I like Isekai trash. I will watch it even if... I am the self-proclaimed Isekai trash reactor king on YouTube. Self-proclaimed. If it is just fundamentally 100% objectively trash, I'll potentially watch it. And the reason for that is because... I'm a sucker for fantasy, okay? I, I am. I, I like- And I bet I've watched more Isekai slop than Chibi has. Bro, the, <laughs> not just Isekai, even like native Isekai slop, like the healer that got banished from the party that we're watching this season. Like, I watched so much of these mid-fucking animes that an anime now that just like actually shows things being animated is enough for me to be like, oh my god, peak, which is how diluted my, you know, sense of what a good product should be. So like, at this point, I have a pretty clear idea of like the standards of different tiers of like isekai and how much like priority or like work they put in and this is not like tier one this is slightly above tower of god i guess I like dragons I like swords I like knights I like wizards you, you get the point okay yep. i'm a dnd fan warcraft fan you, you get you get it anyways um i i like those type of stories and typically when you're sorting through the trash you might come upon an unpolished gem a diamond or mm. a ruby whatever okay and Basically, the image or the look that the beginning after the end is getting, especially with this trailer, it looks like a very generic Asakai or it a does. generic fantasy story. It truly feels like any of like the 20 plus isekais or native isekai seasonal anime that's pumped up by Katakawa on a seasonal basis, right? Like how many times have you watched animes like that? It just, it feels like that. Now, does it need to pop out and be unique? It'd be nice if it was, but right now it just looks standard. That, that's what it looks like. It looks super super generic very subpar below average to average type of presentation that this trailer presents mm. and that's very sad it's legitimately sad because it is unique it is now its origins are definitely uh controversial to a degree when it comes to two different communities and i guess let's say we should get done say way into that one this what you see on screen <laughs> dude i already saw these dudes on Twitter get mad about this shit. I already saw motherfuckers comparing, you know, it's, it's basically called like Walmart quality, like Michelle Kutensei. Fun fact, that same account is the exact one that was like spewing a hate, low-key saying some racist shit, maybe, about me and my reserved content. And then basically saying like, I can't believe there's people online that just drive separate drama for different communities to fight. This is so not good. Bro, they do the same single thing. I want to pull that up, motherfucker up right now, actually. I want to pull that motherfucker. Remember, I'm a very, very petty person. I'm extremely petty. Whenever someone starts shit with me, you'll notice that I never start drama. I quote unquote end drama, 
but I also like to keep it kind of going. And if you look, if you look, all right, all right, all right. Let's 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 uh, let's do a little bit of an ego surfing. All right, ego surfing time. All right. Uh, oh, glazing my index reactions. By the way, we're watching Todd and the Index right now. It's pretty fun. Where is this motherfucker? Oh yeah, these motherfuckers. Remember the video I made? Remember the video I made of these fucking clown monkeys? Oh my god. And I want you to I want you to look at this comment. I want you to uh, look at this comment. Where is it? Where is it? Come on. Uh, not this one. It's the other one here. Where is it? Did he delete it? It's a specific comment about how people online continues to divide communities for no fucking reason. They have no idea about what I'm even talking about. They clip my content out of context for one specific example and then bring up a different narrative. Stop making shit up about other people to fit your hatred for a person. Uh, oh, this guy's protecting. Oh, nice. Hey! Let's go! This guy fucking ratioed him now. Four likes to one like. Is that really a ratio? Anyways, what I'm trying to say here is this motherfucker. <laughs> Bro, look at this fucking tweet. Not that. Not that. Walmart Mushoku Tensei is getting an anime. Bro, look at this shit. They do the things that they condemn others for doing. Why are you fucking riling up the communities for no fucking reason, getting fucking mad for this shit? Anyways, we're, we're getting off topic. I mean, this guy's a fucking clown. If you want a little bit more about what happened, you should go to the... <laughs> Where's the ReZero playlist? Come on, come on, come on. There's a lot of fun, quote-unquote, drama in the ReZero playlist. Where's this shit? 269 videos now. 269 videos now. Let's uh, sort by date published newest. And if you go down, 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 down. Jesus Christ, there's too many fucking videos. Where is it? That's smuggle. Oh, this one. This is the one. This is the one. Some people like it, to say it, it, that it's, it's so fun. Say it's not a redemption story because he it's so fun to just dunk on these stupid kids. Anyways, go check out this video if you want to see more detailed roast session of these fucking clowns on Twitter. But hey, let's get back to the main content at hand. Let's get back to it. Hold up. We're getting out of focus here. Green is Mushiku Tensei and the beginning after the end. The top is the beginning after the end. The bottom is Mushiku Tensei. Okay. Now, obviously, this seems very similar and obviously it's just one frame out of like the, an episode or from you know the beginning after the end but the reason why i'm drawing you know an actual focus on this like a spotlight is because there is a huge discussion between both of these communities that the beginning after the end ripped off mushiku Tensei. oh now, did it I don't now know the, the core full argument everything all the evidence that's brought to the table but it is very clear from what i have read of the beginning after the end that mm. yes there is a lot of similarities between both series. And does that mean it's a bad thing? No, I don't give a fuck. Every time there's something new happening, it's, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You take what's good, you copy what was good, you customize it to have your own flavor, then deliver a better experience. I don't give a fuck if to bait, it got you know, gets content inspired by Mushoku Tensei. Fantastic. I love Mushoku Tensei. Now there's going to be themes that I enjoy in debate, and it's going to be its own spice variant of it. Amazing. 100%. Now we could chalk this up to just the genre and the themes and stuff like that and what the story is about. Again, like children online crying and, you know, fighting each other through vague fucking tweets. They don't understand. They just want imaginary points to make their brains feel good because they're fucking lonely and depressed. True fans of good things can recognize that simply copying does not mean it's bad you copy and make it unique now if it's a complete ripoff there's nothing changing now you're just being fucking fraudulent right but any reasonable logical person could understand that an argument of oh to bait is inspired by mushoku tensei therefore trash you're actually retarded ballot and stuff you, you could chalk it up to that but it's very clear at the very least the author of the beginning after the end was potentially inspired by Mushiku Tensei okay. to some degree. Great. Even if not, uh, uh, like the whole series, some elements did. And you know what I'm waiting for right now? Some motherfucker out there to be inspired by ReZero and give me another isekai that has the flavors of ReZero that I love but make it unique. That's what I want. Definitely were 
pasted into the beginning. And so, for a very long time, basically, there's been a heavily ongoing debate that basically, the beginning after the end is the, uh, the bootleg version of MT. Now, even if you agree or disagree with that, the comparisons are definitely there. You can easily find a lot of discussions about this online, and it, it's been an ongoing discussion for years at this point. And you know what the saddest thing is? Uh, Mushoku Tensei people are definitely going to slam dunk on debate when the anime comes out. And the anime is probably going to be bad relative to Mushoku Tensei. Because the polish that Mushoku Tensei gets, I don't even know what studios do Mushoku Tensei. Holy shit. Mushoku Tensei Studio. Studio Bind does Mushoku Tensei, huh? They did both season 1 and 2. But like, it will never be on that tier of content. Even if to bait source material may be equal, if not better than Mushoku Tensei, the anime adaptation will definitely be inferior. People are going to clown on this fucking anime, and it's just going to be sad. However, the beginning after the end does become its own thing. It does branch off from the, like, replica of MT. Studio Bind was literally created for Mushoku Tensei, huh? That's crazy. And ReZero. Studio White Fox, I'm not going to say it was created for ReZero, but they have a very close connection, right? White Fox is definitely known for ReZero. And then there's this Korean series where we're given just random fucking studios. Whenever Japanese works are very popular and it's going to get an adaptation, this, the industry just fucking puts such emphasis and priority and brings the best talents put together to give the best adaptation possible. But with Webtoon content, aside from solo leveling, and I don't even think A1 Pictures adaptation of solo leveling is like on the same tier. Well, I haven't read solo leveling source material. It's pretty good, but I don't think it's definitely really, really good, but it's not like that insane top tier polish. And, and aside from solo leveling, like Tower of God, God of High School, all these different shows, they just get done dirty. There is even the other anime that got put under the radar. It was airing sometime near solo leveling. It's a show called The Returner's Magic Should Be Special. I remember that because in the manga subreddit, like solo leveling and returners should be special were always like one of the highest upvoted content in the manga subreddit when I used to like read manga of different shows. I didn't get to check them out, but I always saw those numbers and was like, huh, that's kind of crazy. And the anime, no one fucking knows even happened. Another webtoon anime that gets flown under the radar just gets a mid-adaptation like, what, what, what is this? Is this not a pattern of behavior? Is this not Japan that not recognizing works from outside of Japan and giving less talent? I could totally think that. Like, don't you think that's a possi possibility? I don't want to go around scrutinizing, you know, Japan and the values that they have had. And of course, they're going to want to give the best talent for their homegrown products. But something about this just seems like a pattern of behavior at this point. And it becomes its own story. It has action and all sorts of stuff. And it becomes really, really good. And a lot of people love it. It's, it's, there's a reason why there's a dedicated fan base to this very day to it. And um, the thing is, is that it's crazy to think that a series that starts off very similar to MT, okay? Is going to be getting basically the, uh, a bad adaptation potentially. Yeah. Because, you know, a bad studio or a studio that doesn't have the budget and the production to be able to push, you know, the beginning after the end to the proper levels. While Mushiku Tensei got a very well above average anime adaptation. Mm -hmm. And this is going to add fuel to the fire of, oh, like, yeah. you know, the beginning after the end is... I can't wait. I'm salivating right now. Listen, for you guys... You guys are probably like, oh no, it's not going to get the adaptation to me. It doesn't matter. As a reactor, if it's good, we glaze. If it's bad, we farm the drama. I always come out on top. There's going to be so much unhinged motherfuckers, you know, going to war. And oh my God, the juicy comments. Can you, I can already hear unwelcome school playing in the background as we're fucking cackling like monkeys reading the comments. A bootleg. A bootleg to MT, and it's like, ah, oh, yes, your bootleg is getting a bootleg looking anime. So, yeah, it's gonna know, happen. The discussions around this is gonna yep. get probably toxic in the future. Which oh, is yeah, sad because I think they both have their own strengths and weaknesses, they both have their own routes. And personally, at this current time, I still prefer MT over beginning after the end, but fair, to be fair, I'm not caught up with beginning after the end, so I can't really speak for its current content still. 
I will say that it is legitimately unfortunate to have news like this today. At first, I was very happy because mm. of the announcement. But then as I dived more into the information and dived into who's working on it, the director and all that, it's very clear that um, we're cooked. This series has a huge uphill battle to be able to be Ooh. successful. It probably has the hardest uphill battle, I think, of any web tune slash webcomic series to anime i've seen like it is legitimately i mean uh, remember the return is magic it should be special right there's these other projects that just people don't even know it fucking aired man a massive hurdle that needs to be overcome to be fair i mean a cap might actually finally for once since their founding since 1996 yeah might finally produce that's right studio a cat has realized you know what no more mid we are going to pump out peak and this project to bait is gonna be our magnum opus our flagship product people will remember our name <sighs> well one way or the other people will remember the studio's name when to bait airs it could be a good thing and it could also be a bad thing but we will remember use a banger or put them off the map one or the other Whatever the case may be, I do think that uh, the beginning after the end is going to be talk of the town when it does release for oh, good yeah. or bad. Whatever will happen, it's yes, going to be sir. one of those. But I do hope it's good. I really do. It, it's too. a really good story from what I've read. And I do think that it deserves an amazing anime adaptation. But seeing something like this, it does sadden me. It's I, bad I really signals. I wish that there was a lot more love and dedication and care put with these titles because it's like a lot of these webtoon webcomic series could really become just outright bangers and smash success and hits if they were given enough time to cook with proper team but it's very clear these companies just want to dive into the anime pie and release these series because they just want to get quick cash instead of anything else and it's so sad it's so fucking sad and they're so short-sighted like i don't think you need to focus on volume like, you're not doing a fucking reaction channel like me trying to pump out 10 videos a day. Fucking put some time and effort into these projects and I bet that you could make even more money. Like, one quality anime can do more for the anime industry than 30 mid-fucking isekai slops that gets released, right? One Frieden, one ReZero, one Mushoku Tensei. Compare that to, like, the roster of mid-animes that airs every fucking season. It's just so sad, the whole corporate structure, the greed, any time, and it's not specifically for anime either. This happens in any industry where art is now becoming like a commodity and people are trying to monetize it. And there's going to be a conflict of interest of people wanting to put in the labor of passion. And then the other group, the decision maker is realizing that nah, 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 fuck that. We don't care about that. We just care about filling our pockets and we're going to pay the animators, everyone else, just such a little salaries and we're going to get away with it by, you know, packing our fucking pockets. And that's just the way capitalism goes, baby. It's like if they waited and they gave it proper time, you could have stuff that can become a new legendary series that everybody talks about for decades to come. But exactly. But don't think like that. They want that quick revenue as quick as possible. Yeah. Obviously, it feels really counterintuitive if you release a bad product, but you get the point. People are going to watch it regardless, even if it is terrible. But they could stand to make a lot more if they made it a lot better. That's what Anyways, I'm saying. All I'm going to say is, is that this announcement really caught me by surprise, and I do hope it's good, but it ain't looking good. It ain't looking good at all. I'll leave it at that, though. Thank you so Remember, guys, hope for the best. Never be a doomer. The moments that you're always negative and depressed and thinking the worst possible outcome, your reality will basically manifest around that. It's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. You should always hope for the best, but be realistic. Expect or prepare, you know, for the worst. And it's looking pretty bad, right? It's, it's looking, the signals that we're getting is pretty bad, but one way or other, we're gonna be able to farm this content. And on a separate note, why do fandoms feel the need to put others down? Why do you see so many Mushoku Tensei profile pictures, Reezer profile pictures, and not even just those shows, right? And this isn't even exclusive to anime. There's a lot, and it, it, it's basically team sports. There's this tribalism mindset where basically these losers that's never accomplished anything, they bandwagon on the success of a popular franchise, a popular IP, 
and they feel like they're on the winning team and they can never rationalize in their head if something else is doing good or just as good or even better. There is never friendship. It's always, if you're not on our side, you're against us. And that's why you see, again, stupid fucking tweets from dumb kids, you know, like this guy, right? It's, it's just so fucking stupid. But at the end of the day, you know, get your fucking Twitter engagement. Get your fucking, you know, get your keep, you know, cheap little likes. At the very least, fucking make a video on it and fucking monetize yourself. I can't believe this, these fucking losers actually spend all fucking day just tweeting for imaginary points that just has nothing to do with any, like, creating a brand, creating fucking anything. But hey, it is what it is. Please, go give Chibi a like on the video. Here's the channel. And again, remember, hope for the best, prepare for the worst.